Good morning. Good morning, family. Listen, I'm going to um, make this video instead of responding back to each individual email. I hope you guys rested well. Happy Sunday. Um, <clears throat> but when I want to say this, I'm going to give the same advice um, to many of you all that my elder gave to me because many of us, we're experiencing the same thing. And many of you, I read some of your emails. I responded back to some of you, but it's, you're going through the exact same thing, different, same game, different ball field. You're all spread out. And what's happening is what my elder told me is don't let them get you in the flesh. See, the battle is spiritual. The enemy would want to get us into our flesh. And so what's happening is, think it not strange. Um, see, everybody who claims the name of God is not experiencing the same thing, right? So this is how you know that you are one who is walking with God. You're on this path for real because um, some people who say they're of God, they'll look at you, what you're going through and they won't be able to discern it. They may be able to discern it, but because they're not taking... They're not taking their walk with God as serious as you're taking a walk with God. They want to know why you're doing all that, you know, or they'll try to make it look like, oh, you always got drama following you. It's not drama. It's spiritual warfare where we wrestle not against the flesh and blood. But sometimes the enemy comes at us through people that he's able to use in the earth. And what my elders said, they want to get you in the flesh. See, they want to get you in the flesh, but the battle is spiritual. And so this is why you often hear me say, Every time the enemy comes at you, use the word of God to bat him back. Think it not strange, <clears throat> like my my young sister um, that I responded to this morning. I can't remember. I responded to several of you this morning, but one of you, um, you were saying the people in your complex, everybody's just being mean with you. When you had um, the visit from uh, different people, you have to interact with people are just being very rude or disrespectful think it not strange they want to get you in your flesh several of you you're going through issues in your home some people are going through issues with their spouses some of you are, are, are you know are dealing with weird issues with your spouses it just doesn't make sense it's all the enemy fighting you through your spouse pray for them anoint their clothing anoint things in the home you know pray over your home the enemy wants to get you in the flesh. The battle is really spiritual. Some of you say you're going through things with your children, different family members, on jobs and colleagues. Think it not strange when your warfare seems to um, intensify and then you're getting betrayed by friends. You got people who are coming up. They keep trying to assassinate your character. They're throwing stones at you. People who don't even know you. Count it all joy. Count it all joy. Because let me tell you something. Whenever you are serious about your walk with Christ for real. Remember I always told y'all, some people fold. See, some people fold when that warfare get hard. What the enemy wants you to do, he wants you to back down a little bit. You will even have some people who call themselves prophets of God. They want you to shut your mouth. Now, if we speaking from the same foundation and we of the same spirit, why would you want to shut my mouth? You should be saying something to encourage me, right? Not trying to kick me down. Remember, it was Christians that threw Paul in jail right and so you have some people tell you oh it ain't all that they ain't going through nothing you know why because the devil got their hand on them see they straddling that fence and what did god tell us he'd rather us be hot than cold but if we be lukewarm he'll spit us out of his mouth see and so when you really trying to walk that walk for real not perfect you're gonna make mistakes it is written a righteous man or it can be a woman may fall seven times why because we will make mistakes but when you got your mind made up the devil know who is serious and who's bold enough to tackle him who's bold enough to shine that light and help god's people understand the word enough to break the strongholds to be able to fight back against him who's trying to walk upright in this flesh who lives in a who's keeping his flesh crucified walking in purity you ain't out here collecting soul ties and and you, you you ain't out here messing around and you understand what i'm saying you're living upright keeping your temple pure walking with god for real and even if you may find yourself you you fall down in some areas or make mistakes you're willing to confess that thing and you get back up and you keep going on that path and so therefore the enemy will send people to try to get you angry to try to provoke you to try to make it look like you're not who you claiming to be to try to label you in some type of way to try to murder your name kill your influence try to assassinate your character any type of thing that he can send somebody to do to pull you down to try to steal from you whatever it is he want to get you 
in the flesh, but the battle is spiritual. And so you get into the word, dig deeper into the word of God. And you, when you identify the spirit that's trying to fight against you, you lift up the standard against those spirits with the word of God. (sighs) Excuse me. You lift up a standard against those spirits uh, with the word of God, you know, and you let God fight your battles. You have to pray. You have to fast. That's work. It takes work, you know, and the more you see yourself praying and fasting and standing on the word of God, you're going to see a shift, you know, you're going to see a shift and you just continue to press your way through. Keep going. Don't ever give up on your faith. Don't stop doing any of your daily affairs. You're going to get tired sometimes. Warfare sometimes make you tired. Right? But these things are not meant to destroy you. It's meant to perfect you. It's meant to make you stronger. That light that you shot at many of you, you're generational curse breakers. You can't be no generational curse breaker without going through nothing, baby. To whom much is given, much is required. See, it's one thing to blab out that name. It's one thing to say, oh, I'm a generational curse breaker. But see, one of the fruits of the spirit is long suffering. See, people, people like to skip that part, especially you have a lot of people that dangle money in front of you. Oh, God has blessed me because I walk upright. It ain't even about the money, baby. It ain't even about the money. They will use scripture to try to justify their riches and them just teaching you about riches. No, God wants his people to be wealthy. God wants his people to have more than enough. Abraham was blessed. He was wealthy. He had his own water. The man got his own water like in that money in that movie coming to america what they said the man got his own money (laughs) he had his own water he dug his own wells you see he had his own cattle he could provide his own food he was wealthy true wealth self-sufficient you know but that's not the number one focus you know is money it's not about the money money is losing its value every day True wealth comes from the inside, comes from the fruits of the spirit. That's where the abundance starts at, right? The Bible says in the, even in days of famine, the righteous shall have plenty. Why? Because God has already given his people divine wisdom, divine skills, unique skills and ability. So you're not worried about anything because what you need is already on the inside of you. You will know how to sustain yourself and help sustain your brothers and sisters, right? But thinking not strange at the level of attacks. Count it all joy. Count it all joy. Don't get in your feelings. Don't get in the flesh. That's what my elder said. The battle is spiritual. Stand on the word. See, when you stand on the word, they don't, those spirits, once you lift up a standard against those spirits, it's hard for them to come back against that word, right? Because that's what sets the standard against them. And even some folk who will call themselves, let me tell you one thing. You will never see a true prophet of God assassinating somebody's character publicly. You may see a true prophet of God rebuking, pulling their brother or sister to the side, helping, correcting, teaching. But even then, they will do it in love, right? They will do it in love. They will do it in a way that captured the, 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 the person's mind could understand. God is not a God that spreads lies, malicious gossip. He's not a God that tries to paint, assassinate people's character. Because at the end of the day, we all have free will. We have to choose this day, every day, who we going to serve. And so when you see somebody saying, God told me to tell you this person is a crackhead. This person is a, a, a alcoholic. This person is this. This person is that. There's a liar. God ain't never tell you to go out. And publicize and assassinate people's character. But the adversary will. The spirit of the Antichrist will. Because that's how Satan operates. He wants to shut the mouths of the true prophets of God. So you will see a lot of Jezebels. Hiding behind that title of prophet. And what does really. What does prophesy really mean? It means to teach. And what should, what's the greatest thing we could teach? The word of God. There is nothing greater I don't have anything greater that I can ever share with you except the word of God and helping you understand that and using it to bring more clarity to our earthly lives. That's the greatest thing because the gospel should go out all over and be preached all over the four corners of the earth, right? But so when you have somebody assassin, have people assassinating your character, lying on you, turning people against you, count it all joy. 
you're growing. You're being perfected. The devil will never try to stop you, block you, murder you, assassinate you if you wasn't carrying something great. See, my elder told me, she said, he's fighting what's on the inside of you. He ain't fighting you. He fighting that spirit, that light that's on the inside of it. God put that there. That's a part of God. See, you resemble your father. And so what did Jesus say? You will be hated by all men for my sake. But he's already overcome the world. Now, does that mean every single human being? No. But those who are not of God. He told many people, you are of your father, the devil. If you were of God, you would love me. So understand, children who are of their father, the devil, they do what their father does. They try to frustrate your purpose. They try to frustrate your walk. They try to slow you down. They try to get you in the flesh, make you angry. They try to embarrass you. They try to shut your mouth. They will try to kill your influence. Children of the devil. See? Satan, when he went, he even tempted Christ. He tempted Christ when he was on his fast for 40 days and 40 nights. He told him, if you're really the son of God, make these stones turn to bread. And what did Jesus do? He used the word to lift up a standard against him. He said, it is written that thou shalt not put that God, the Lord, that God to the test. Old devil had to flee from him. He got, a, he got annoyed. See, the word is a standard. And so you will have some false prophets that get mad when they see you always sharing the scriptures. Oh, you weaponizing the Bible. You know, it is a sword. It is a sword. So don't, don't even defend yourself no more when somebody say, oh, you weaponizing the Bible. When you just talking scriptures and sharing scriptures, something about that is offending them. And it has nothing to do with you. Right? Because if they were truly on that same walk, then you would know that the word is our sword. And so therefore, it does act as a weapon against the forces of darkness. But if you ain't fighting the same spiritual battles, if you ain't, you can quote, you can copy what I say. You got eyes you can't see, you got ears you can't hear. Copy what I say. And then when you try to turn around and throw a stone at me, you are not my brother in Christ. We are not the same. We ain't walking that same path. So you go and serve your God. You can tell everybody else over here, you're a man of God. You can quote what I said. But if you really had eyes to see, you would not get offended. When I'm raising up a standard against these forces of darkness who are constantly coming to try to sow seeds of discord, to try to um, assassinate the character of God's people, who try to frustrate the purpose of God's people. It's the spirit. It's the spirit behind them. And so those forces of darkness, they know. They know who you are. And they ain't mad at the human being. There's no human being in this earth that I've hate. I've never in my life hated anybody. I don't know what it feels like to hate someone. Even my very enemies who have betrayed me, who have lied on me, who tried to hurt me. If it was pouring down rain and I was passing by and I saw them broke down and walking on the side of the street, I'd give them a ride to their next destination. I'd give them some cab money if I didn't want them to ride with me. If they needed water, I'd give them water. If they needed clothes on their back, I would give them clothes. See? And the Bible tells us to do that. That's evident that my heart is in the right posture. But that don't mean you have to forget. <clears throat> you forgive people, but you don't have to forget and be dumb and act like you unsee the evil that you've already seen. No, that would be somebody who's delusional. You're crazy. No, you don't have to un act like you don't see what is already clearly you've been able to discern. But you don't have to bring whole things over people's head and they don't have to be back involved in your life. That don't mean that you don't forgive them. If I see my enemy thirsty and hungry and starving, I give them what I can give them. I will give them and go about my way. My heart is in the right posture. And see, that's what the enemy wants to do, people of God. He wants to make your heart bitter. Don't let the pain make you bitter. Let it make you better. He wants to turn your back. He wants to make you give up. He wants you to make these confessions with your mouth. I'm so tired. Every time I go forward, I have to take steps back. Well, you just not professing that out of your mouth. You speaking it. That's why I have to tell some folks sometimes. Out of the mouth comes life or death, blessings or curses. Those who love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You war with your mouth when it comes to these forces of darkness. 
when we speaking about ourselves we speak good things we speak positive things my elders even had to get on me because i would call myself dumb sometimes when i'm you know when i talk about some of the mistakes i made i still have to catch myself sometimes because i've been so used to saying it you know when i talk about some of the mistakes i've made and things i've done in life and you know i'd say you know i was just so dumb you know and i you know in some ways i felt like i was but i have to stop professing that with my mouth you know yeah we all have levels of ignorance a lack of knowledge in some places you know but you grow and when you really a young baby in christ and you don't really know where god you don't know the calling on your life there are people that already see you they see that pureness of heart there are several friends that i've had in my life where i didn't go i didn't seek their friendship they came to me they made me their friend and i just thought that was so such the coolest thing and later as time got to the find they was nothing but witches working in root witchcraft all of that stuff working spells on me yeah they sought me out they've been watching me and i didn't even know so i learned not to be so gullible i learned to test the spirit you know you have for like i say people come ringing your praises and i used to be so accepting and i still have to work on some areas like that you know um because when your heart is pure, you just don't think wicked like that why would i want to get close to somebody and study them so i can go on back and then work against them but you have people come they'll tell you oh you so i reckon you got the power of god in you the stuff you say that's so powerful it's helping me and then them same people will turn around and go and try to compete against you and they ain't carrying what you got they ain't got the anointing but they didn't look at you and size you up and they want to tag along with you and try to build themselves up off of you so they can kick you out of your spot kick you down but god ain't chose them destiny thieves then you have monitoring spirits or there are some people that sit and watch you and learn you or get close to you and see all of your skills your quality they'll be taking little things from you taking things from you and act like they don't even know you act like you ain't had nothing to do with it a covetous spirit they see you full of ideas when you carry the anointing when you walk with god you are like a running well because you could do anything there's so many gifts and talents that many of you you're probably multi-talented you got so many things about yourself People can see that. People can see that. I'm a living with it. It happened to me my whole life. And you get people that sit back. Sometimes you get people that come and they befriend you. They be so kind to you. And then you sit, you, you know, you sit back. They sit back and watch you. They monitoring you, but they ain't saying nothing. They acting like they don't see you, but they see everything. They is like a, obsessed with you. And then sometimes you'll see people. They go and hide themselves for a while and they come and show their face or they come and comment or say something. They, they, it's always like they'll try to comment on the minimal things. They never can come into full agreement with you. Why? On spiritual things that you're talking about. And when you're really talking about something that's very big and powerful or, or very deep, they, they can't come in contact with you. They can't come in agreement with you because you're not of the same spirit. They have monitoring spirits. <laughs> yeah, monitoring spirits are very real. They will sit and they will watch and it's like they just latch on to you they so obs- it's like it becomes like an obsession with you but they don't really like you it's the spirit on people you know and so you got to keep your guards up you know when, you, when when people come at you oh i'm so glad god put me on your path i've had people say that really you know you embrace them after some time gone you walking through life walking by the spirit sharing things that come to your spirit they start getting offended at you. <laughs> they start trying to control you. They start trying to, they don't take all that. You ain't got to be doing all that. They start, they start trying to shut you down and you walking on your path. with God. the same path that they connected with you on and say, oh, I, you got the power of God on your life. If I got the power of God, why are you going over here trying to compete with me? Why are you going over here trying to send subliminal disses my way? Why are you trying to say things to mess with my mental, to make me second guess myself? Cut cut don't feel bad about cutting people when you on this walk with god because you need to be in tune with the spirit of god it's gonna feel real lonely sometimes but it needs to be that way because god will protect you see see when i was first on my journey just a baby in christ i didn't want to keep disconnecting from people i tried to make friendships work i tried to keep people in mind no that's my brother no that's my sister i give people second chance and when you see they done dishonor you in some way when you see they done stole from you when they see that you just keep forgiving i forgive but i kept trying to i forgive but i kept trying to think they gonna they'll be better they'll do it you know they ain't gonna do it no more 
you know, and I didn't have no siblings. Being the only child, you know, I didn't always want to be by myself. I wanted a brother or sister. I wanted somebody to be able to hang out with, go to the, uh, go to Six Flags Water Park with. I was a big kid too, you know. I wanted people to hang around me, but now, mm -mm, I can move solo, baby. I can move solo. Not saying that I, I won't take counsel from anyone. You know, because the Bible said there's wisdom in the multitude of counselor. You know, I will. I like to um, be around people who can teach me. I like to be around people who can help me. You know, elevate the way I'm thinking, or either share things with me that 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 helps me grow. I love to learn. I love to be around people who are not afraid to correct me. You know, um, in a loving way. People whose spirit is pure. See, when people, some people can correct you and try to break you. So you got to be careful about who you let get into your ear. But when you know somebody's spirit is pure and you can connect with them and their heart is in the right place, they love God, they ain't going to be perfect. But I don't mind being corrected. Tell me about myself. I don't like a lot of, and I've always been like this, I don't really, I don't like yes people around me, but I've always been kind of like a leader, you know, in any groups that I've ran into. And I've always, um, you know, uh, I've always love to be able to have somebody to lead. Like I've always wish I had somebody to just be there that I could be what I am to other people. You see what I'm saying? Like I could be, um, I could just lean on this person for their feedback, for their ideas, for their, you know, um, friendships like that, that help build me and, and, and not just me pulling, but also me pouring and receiving, you know, not just always me pouring, you know, I, I want to receive as well as I can pour. If that, if that makes sense. You know, and so that's why I cling to a lot of my elders and I'm so grateful when God places them on my path. Sometimes he'll place elders on my path for a season or just for some particular things. I have elders that um, are mechanically inclined where they work on things like sometimes I like to work on, you know, things that go wrong on my car, different vehicle services. I like to do those things um, myself. And sometimes when I need assistance i got an elder that just loves it it's his passion and he can if i need help or assistant with something i know my uncles are live further away from me but he can swing by and point out something to me something that i don't know you know or point me in the right direction of how to look something up or give me the terminology because there's still lingo for certain things i don't have the term i know what i'm ta talking about but the terminology of certain things is all um and so he's had he has elders and and that have crossed my path or that are in my life where we are like-minded when it comes to certain um things crafts and things um that we do and then he has placed elders in my life that can give me feedback spiritual feedback um and and that are filled with the word of god and that truly love him and then i'm so grateful for the elder that he's recently placed in my life she's just she's just a phenomenal writer you know and I just get, I'm just getting all these ideas after being connected with her, you know, she's into the arts and that's my passion. So this is only a divine connection and I give God all the glory because like I tell you, when God want to connect you with somebody, they're going to see you or you're going to see them. And it's going to be, it's going to be like, is this real? You're going to be, there's going to be so much you have in common. And sometimes it's just for a little small season and then sometimes you never know how long it may last but they're gonna have so much when when god want to connect you with somebody they will pour into you they will just pour into you and when he's had me connect with people i just pour into them you know many of you say how I, how god has just blessed you um through just spoken to you through me he gets all the glory and all the god honor it's all him you didn't have to pay for it right <laughs> you know it's divine divine connections and so, anyway, let me stop talking so much. Um, think it not strange, so understand that the battle is spiritual. Don't let them pull you into the flesh. I'm taking that same advice, you know, that was given to me by my elder, and it's true. You know, don't let them pull you into the flesh. Start praying more and use that, that opposition. All that's happening is because you're on the right track. If you go back, see, some people fold when it get hard. You go back a little bit because he want to shut your mouth. He want to turn you back to whatever that thing you've been doing. You've been sleeping around, having all that sex outside of marriage. He wants you to go back and have some more sex. You've been drinking, getting high. He wants you to go back there, open your, open the portals to your soul again. Get your mind off of staying on that word of God, sharpening your sword. He don't want you going deep into that word of God. You know, 
You've been a thief. You've been loving money. You've been stealing and robbing. He wants you going back, finding ways to get money the fast way, the quick way. He wants you going back, trying to take it from your brothers and sisters. Don't do it. Stay on that thin and narrow path. You stay on that path. And as you keep pressing, see, resist the devil and he will flee from you. How do we resist him? Use the word of God to raise up a standard against him. And like Pat Sakim said, beat back the buzzes. And how you beat them back? With the word of God. And as, and as you press, see, once you start beating them back, that warfare might intensify a little bit. See, because he's going to try to intimidate you. And then he will try to, who he uses, he uses our brothers and sisters. And don't be surprised when some of them supposed to be of the church are claiming to be men and women of God. That's what he figured he can hurt you the worst, right? But don't let it make you bitter, baby. Let it make you better. Stay on that word. Stay on your path. And as you keep pressing through, staying humble, because it all molds us. It makes us more patient, builds our spiritual muscles, makes us more resilient. Remember I did that video? Some people are getting jealousy of being exposed. People are becoming angry at the resilience of God's people. Yeah, you have a lot of, folk who claim to be your brothers and sisters in Christ, but you know who they are when you're going through something or wait until somebody say something about you wait until have somebody try to publicly assassinate your character and then you will really see those who pretending to be for you or when you're going through hard warfare they ain't gonna say nothing to encourage you they get silent on you see because it's something about you they don't like but that's okay everybody is not going to like you. Jesus said you'll be hated by all men for my name's sake. But don't let that cause you to turn back from this thin and narrow path. You stay on that thin and narrow path. You keep walking. Keep walking with God. It's reward. And then your breakthrough is near. Right? Your breakthrough is near. All you got to do is press through it. And then you're going to feel it all calm down. It's going to all calm down. And you're going to enjoy your breakthrough. And you look back, you're going to be stronger. But you keep staying in the word of God. Don't think you can go back and start mingling or go back. You keep, you're, gonna, you're, gonna, you're not going to feel no pressure. You're not going to feel no opposition after you break through. But after some time, what happened? What did the Bible tell us? When Jesus rebuked Satan with the word of God, that word of God lifted up a standard against him. What did he do when he left Jesus? He went, he fled, and he went and waited for an opportune time. So for that opportune time, you know what he was doing? He was re-strategizing. He was re-strategizing. So you got to stay strong in all areas. The devil know your weaknesses. <laughs> you understand? So if he can't get you one way, he going to fly you. He can't get you on the left side. He going to fly over to that right side and try to hit you on that side. See? Because you ain't coming down to him. You ain't coming down into the flesh. See, he wants you arguing with him. He wants you going back. He wants you in your emotions. He wants you in your mind. But it's spiritual. And when you go up, when you fight spiritual, you're fighting higher. See? The devil can only fight you down here in the flesh. And then the thoughts that come to the mind cast down the strongholds of the imagination. Everything that exalts itself against the word of God, you got to cast it down. And remind yourself, meditate. That's what the Bible said. Meditate on the word of God. And see, the more we study, the more stronger we become. The more our faith increases, right? So think it not strange. It gets better. It gets better, baby. It gets better. All things work together for the good, not the bad, but the good of those who love the Lord. It don't feel good sometimes, but it's what must happen. The just must live by faith, and our faith must be tried. And so that's all. Think it not strange. You're growing. You are growing and you are elevating in Christ. So it's a good thing. Use that opposition as confirmation and try to get up and be moving. You know, get your rest, rest well, work hard, do you do whatever you got to keep your mind always trying to focus on something. Your thoughts of you are greater for the thought greater for you than the thoughts of anybody else. So always try to keep your um, thoughts focused on things that are productive. And that benefits you, right? And before you know it, as time continues to go on and go on and go on, you'll look back over your life and be like, I've accomplished all of that. You know? So, yeah. Don't give up. Don't give up. 
And so be encouraged. And, um, you know, you, my sister said that, uh, my sister that said you felt like your friend has turned a lot of people against you. Welcome to the club. Your brothers and sisters can comment right here under this video and tell you we've all been through it. And you ain't the only one that's probably going through it right now. Other folk are experiencing the same thing. So welcome to the club. Take it as a badge of honor, baby. You have arrived. Yeah, the, when they pour water, that remind me of that song I like to sing, Pouring Water on a Drowning Man. You talked about me to your friends. Yes, you did. But if you weren't willing to lend me a helping hand, then it's just like pouring water, pouring water. On a drowning man Said it just like pouring water Pouring water On a drowning man They pour water on you while they see you drowning Right? They try to kick you while you're down They see everybody coming against you That's when their true loyalty is revealed And that's when you learn sometimes They was never with you, baby Their heart was never with you See, and there was probably some red flags before, but you never paid attention to. So just hug yourself. It's okay. Keep going. It's a badge of honor. You're on the right path. You're on the right track, baby. Jesus was betrayed. <laughs> and it led to us being able to call on that blood covenant, baby. That blood will never lose its power. So all things work together. For the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Just keep going. You've already connected with, with your tribe. See? We may not be in the same house. We may not be on the same street. But we are connected. So you ain't going through that. Nothing that's new under the sun. Many of us have already been through it. And as sure as you live, if you don't learn to test spirits, you know, you got to learn the test. It's going to teach you how to test spirit because you don't want it to repeat in your life. That's all. What don't kill you only make you stronger. Yeah. And so anyway, um, have a blessed day. Understand the battle is spiritual. Don't let them get you in the flesh. Stay in the spirit. And count it all joy. Count it all joy because you're on the right track. I love you. Nobody told you. You know your little country bunkin sister loves you. We are the light of the world. Let's continue to let our light shine. Let's don't never let our light grow dark, baby. And we know that the blood of Jesus Yeshua is the only blood that has power. Have a blessed day. Enjoy your Sunday.